I'm Luca Giliberti, contributing writer at Gold Derby, joined today by Isabel Furman, who stars as Alex Stahl in Laura Hathaway's debut feature, The Novice, which premiered at this year's Tribeca Film Festival. Isabel, I read that you submitted more material than was required for your audition. So could you elaborate on your auditioning process and on what compelled you uh, to go beyond the call of duty for this project? Um, I definitely sent a lot more than what was required of me. I think when I read the script, I really related to Alex in so many ways. Um, and primarily because I, like her, have like an insane amount of drive that I don't have any idea where it comes from. And I just was so floored by the script. And, you know, sometimes you read things and you enjoy them or you read something like this and you're like, this is, I have to be this part. I have to be in this movie. I have to tell the story. And so, you know, Lauren says that it like really made her think that I was very much like Alex because I went like above and beyond. But really, from my perspective, I was like, I just want to make sure she knows that I'm the right person for this job, like that she has to hire me because nobody else can do what I can do in this role. So she sent an audition scene um, that like pools talk like over the pool table with Danny. And then I just loved this scene with um, Jamie, Amy Forsythe's character in the script. And so I just decided to print it out and read it as well because I I felt like that was a really like complex scene and I knew exactly how I wanted to do it and I was like I think she'd like this so I recorded it and then I also actually wrote a letter to Lauren because um I do I run and I had done a race from LA to Las Vegas which was like an ultra marathon relay and I ran it with friends and I ran like 60 miles of that race and it took place over like three days and I wanted to write her a note kind of saying like on top of like my acting performance, I know how to handle like exhaustion and like physical like decline. And like, I can handle this movie. And it was so funny when we sat down we for coffee, we just really like clicked because I think she and I both have the same kind of like obsessive drive when it comes to something that we want to go after. And, um, and yeah, so she was like, all right, so let's start getting you rowing lessons. I was like, okay. Yeah, it all worked out, didn't it? Uh, it, did. it did. It does always. <laughs> Sometimes you write notes and you do extra things and like people are like, okay, what is wrong with this girl? But like, I, I think Lauren really kind of connected with me on that because I think we both have that kind of like <laughs> caveat in our personality. Right, right. And you have talked uh, at great length about the uh, physical preparation and training that you had to do for this film. So how was it applying your experience as a novice in rowing to Alex, who, while being in the same boat, has completely different motivations slash reasons for making progress? I think it, it felt very mirrored. I think my, my constant fear was that we're doing a movie about rowing where I knew that I wasn't going to have a double or anybody to hop in the boat for me. And I knew that I had to be convincing enough that it seemed as if I was able to beat all of these girls who are taller than me, which rowing, so much of rowing is funny enough is height. Like all rowers are incredibly tall people. Um, and I, I felt like I had to be the best on set. Like that was kind of like my um, daily sort of thing. And of course, like I was a complete novice, literally. I mean, we had, other than Amy and she and I both did training um, separately and then together, but all of the rest of the um, people in the boat, girls who played High Smith and Jansen, they were actual rowers from the university or from the you know Toronto area. So I was really like asking them for advice, for help. Um, the coaches who were at Trent University like took us in the tank and were training with us on a daily basis. But I really felt this sort of pressure um, because. A, I wanted to be convincing as a rower and B, I knew the physical transformation that I had to go through and, and, and for it to be convincing. And, um, and that was, that was really tough. I mean, 12 pounds of muscle to put on is really difficult, especially if you're small framed like I am. and I'm just like eating constantly. And I mean, I live in LA, I don't eat like a ton of meat or like dairy or anything like that. And my diet like completely shifted while I was working on this project because I needed so many nutrients to continue going because if you're rowing for six hours a day and then you're also doing weight training four times a week, you have to be consuming food. And it's funny because like you're eating, I was eating like, like a, like a grown man, basically like massive amounts of food. And I was still like 
I was like, gosh, I'm still only 120 pounds. It's like to gain five more pounds of muscle. Wow. Wow. And, and in this film, we also get some uh, information about Alex's past, uh, like that she graduated uh, at the top of her class. But what are some of the parts of her backstory that aren't disclosed uh, to viewers, but you as the actor uh, constructive, uh, constructed and leaned on while playing her? Lauren and I spoke a lot about how her drive is not something that necessarily came from, you know, her parents talking to her family or thing like that. It's just something that was in her, which I relate to me personally. Like, you know, I think some people just have, have this kind of drive in them. And I, I don't think everybody does. Um, and I was talking to a friend about this. Like I'm the type of person who would literally break myself to pieces over something, but my, nobody around me has to tell me that I did a good job. Only I have to know that I did a good job mm -hmm. for me to believe it. And that that's just as unhealthy as like not doing anything and sitting on your butt all day. <laughs> like it's just on the other side of the coin. So there was this innate kind of like feeling when we were discussing her past of how can we talk about this, like this part of somebody's personality and how that attracts to like everything that somebody does in their life. And Lauren, you know, was obsessed with rowing when she was doing rowing. And prior to that was like, you know, and, and even making this film was obsessed with making the film and like all of that sorts of stuff. And so we had a lot of conversations about how, you know, Alex's past is just as similar as like what we can expect from her future when the movie ends. Like she learns in high school slightly in our, our story of the novice, because instead of in high school, when someone made her stop and like basically sent her away to get better, she finally has the realization that like, okay, I need to like stop here. Um, but we were talking about like the end scene when she looks at the camera is like a big question of like, well, now what? Because, because the next thing is like, what is Alex going to be like at work? <laughs> Probably the same. And, and, and that's something that, you know, you know, life is like a, a constant, um, constant changing, like you're constantly growing. And so her past as well as her future was something that we really felt like these lessons have to kind of come in these like minor bumps, but they're these huge hurdles that she overcomes. And it's because a lot of her own trauma is self-inflicted. And I think that that's something that we do as people a lot and don't even realize it is that we, we can be people making ourselves the most angry, upset, anxiety ridden, um, full of like confusion or anything like that, just because of the way we hold ourselves in our life and the way we treat ourselves, um, which is kind of the larger story of mental health really in the movie as well. Absolutely. And what we see in the film is that a result of this is that, you know, even though Alex has, she doesn't have much of a social life and she doesn't necessarily have uh, all too many friends, but she does form some sort of a relationship uh, with her TA Danny uh, played by mm -hmm. Delone. How does this relationship um, with someone who in many ways is the complete opposite of her fit into the rigid framework of Alex's life? See, I always felt like as much as, she, you know, so I feel like Alex is one of those people that even though she doesn't listen to, uh, to Delone, like to Danny's character when she says, you got to stop, yeah. she hears her. And I think that is something that a lot of people have is like, when, when you are in this place of like, this is what I have to achieve and the blinders are on, very often people can tell you things and you won't listen, but you still hear them. And so I had this kind of voice in my mind. And when we were filming, I felt like even though her reason for stopping isn't because of Danny, I think that there's still a part of that that makes her kind of hear it for the first time in maybe a while um, because it hurts her when they, when they end the relationship, it really deeply hurts her. And I think that that, it, you know, it's kind of like her realization that she's literally throwing everything out the window. Like even somebody who cared about her while she's literally breaking herself in half, waking up at four in the morning and like leaving the bed and the whole thing. Like, you know, this person was there for her throughout this entire journey. And, and sometimes those wake up calls like don't exactly happen in the moment that a breakup happens or something big happens, but they can happen later. And you can know that that's where that feeling kind of came from. So I always felt like Danny was such an important, not in the literal sense, because she's like a TA, but an important teacher in her life um, of kind of like, 
you can you can you can still be working hard, but you can you can let go of things because you can't always hold on to what you expect is going to happen because it won't. Yeah, and you already alluded to that scene uh, just now. Uh, we do get that scene toward the end of the film uh, between Alex uh, and Danny, where Alex's pain really, uh, pain and anger really erupt, uh, which uh, really is the scene of the movie uh, for me because there's so much that Alex expresses, but twice as much that she isn't able to express in that moment. So what was important uh, for you to get across in that particular scene and how did you prepare it? I think, that scene felt like so incredibly real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it was really just Delone, Lauren, our DP Todd and I like locked in a bathroom. Um, we asked like, you know, I had a conversation with Lauren and I was like, I think we need to do this scene close set. Like, I don't want people walking in and out. I, you know, I didn't want uh, like us to be kind of like, um, bombarded with, you know, it's like you're on set, people ask questions, they want to change lighting, they want to change things around, it, it always becomes this sort of like thing, which I understand we're telling a story while working together, but the scene, even though it wasn't like a, like a nude scene or like a sex scene, which you usually have close set, I felt like it was so important that we had that space, that it felt like an enclosed container, because that kind of emotional moment, um, I think really felt very real to me. Um, I think that I've personally in my life felt misunderstood for my own kind of like drive and aspiration since I was really young. And so what I was saying wasn't exactly, um, like it didn't feel fake, if that makes sense. And being there with, with Delone was like amazing to have that moment. And what I loved too is like, we just did it over and over. Mm. And, and it was funny because we were doing it over and over. And then we had one moment where she tried to grab my waist, which was the, that was not in the script that she tries mm. to grab the, the scars. And we just both started like, like I was just breaking down and she's wow. like, we were like then on the floor and that was not at all scripted. And I remember we finished that take and Lauren was like, that's it. She's like, I don't want to do it again. She's like, that's, that's the one. And that's why when you watch it, it seems like, like the camera's like trying to follow what's happening is because it really was just, it just, it just happened. Like, like it, it's not like the other takes weren't great. It's just, it, there was something different about it that I mean, we were literally crying on the floor for about 20 minutes afterwards. And then we were like, okay, we have to move on to the next scene. <laughs> like we have oh, to continue wow. the day because I, I felt like, you know, breakup scenes in movies can sometimes feel like contrived or put on or, you know, and, and especially because this is such a huge moment for Alex, I really just wanted to be present with everybody. And Delone is such a generous actress. It was like, I felt so, so lucky and like held in that space, which is just incredible. Yeah, and it's an incredible scene. And what Alex uh, hears from so many people throughout the film uh, is stuff like relax and <laughs> you gotta be careful and uh, you gotta let it go. And uh, she tells uh, Danny in this scene that we just mentioned, who I think to a degree really does try to understand. Uh, she tells her that she will never understand. Do you think that Alex really wants to be understood and wants to be saved? Or do you think she subconsciously relies on and is driven by not being understood and being unsavable by others? I think she likes being misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I think there's something that, is attractive to her about how you can't quite pinpoint her. And that's something I loved actually too about the script is like, I remember when we did like a first pass edit and Lauren sent it to me, a lot of people's notes were like, well, what is this frat party scene where she goes out? And I was like, that makes total sense to me. Like in the, in the span of like who I am as a person can change on a daily basis. Like sometimes I wake up and I feel more like sexy and flirty. Other times I wake up and I'm like, I just want to sit in my sweatpants and not go anywhere to talk to me, don't do anything. And I think that when you're in college and you're at that age, especially you're trying on different hats and different personalities and like her having a to-do list of what she wants to achieve while she's in college and the one night stand being one of it is like, she's going to play the part. She's going to go out. She's going to get drunk. She's going to have a good time and that'll be it. And I, I really felt like there was, there was power in her feeling like nobody understood her because it's like nobody can hurt her then. And what's funny is like, nobody's trying to hurt her. And I think that's what's again, like talking about mental health of like where she is as a person, you know, 
Al no one's telling Alex, like, you need to work harder. You're not doing enough. They're all telling her, you're doing great. Relax. You're doing awesome. Like praise, praise, praise. And like, that doesn't land with her because it's not what she personally believes. She doesn't believe she's doing a good job. She doesn't believe she deserves to relax. And that really was something that I felt like was so important in her as a character is like, she, she's not looking for anybody's approval except for her own. And and again, that question of like, where does that come from? And I don't think, I don't, I don't even know where that comes from with myself. And like, I can try and kind of like psychoanalyze it, but I've always been like this since I was a kid. <laughs> and, uh, and I have friends and, and family who are not like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's just really depends, I think on, on the person. And I don't know if that's like a, Lauren and I talked about it, that nature versus nurture, or what, what exactly that piece is of somebody, but it, it's taken me a lot of self-work to be able to go like, okay, I did a good job. <laughs> I can, I need to chill. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you already talked about the, the future before, and you have said that Alex is the one holding the knife uh, in her life and the one giving herself the gold medal, um, as we very much see by the time the credits roll. But keeping that in mind, what do you think it would take or what do you think would have to happen uh, to Alex to, for her to drop that knife and to save herself? Or do you think that's impossible? I don't think it's impossible. I think that it takes, um, it takes time and it takes like, a, 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 from my own personal experience in this area, <laughs> I would say, I think that the biggest factor has been like, I started meditating and that's given me so much more understanding of like letting go of things and that nothing that you expect ever can possibly happen. And so much of what you have control over is just your present moment. Like, you know, I'm so like honored that our movie is getting like buzz and people are talking about it. But when I think about what I learned on this project, how much fun I had. I mean, this was the most incredible shoot I ever was a part of. I loved every single moment. I like lived and breathed this entire world. And, and I'm so proud of the movie that I'm honestly just the happy that people get to see it now. And all of this other stuff is like cherry on top. Like it's, it's really, it's really so cool. Like I can't yeah. even believe it sometimes, but at the same time, it's like, all I really had control over was what I did every single day. And, and if that was enough, then I feel that was enough for me, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that that takes that, that took for me and it still is like a struggle. I mean, sometimes it goes up and down. I mean, you spend, it's, it, I don't, I don't know what it, what it is. It's like, I, I, and I really don't know where it comes from. Maybe that's why this movie was so attractive to me is like, mm -hmm. I don't know where, where that part in myself is that I feel <laughs> constantly like I could do better <laughs> and uh and that's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing I think it's just a part of me that I have to live with <laughs> yeah absolutely and on a final note um mm -hmm. I know that and you already mentioned this just now but I know that playing this character really fostered your own self-awareness uh, which you you've talked about so could you briefly uh, expand expand on that I think playing Alex really gave me an understanding of like um, I went too, too far is, um, and I think I'd started to realize that before, but like working on this movie, I remember consciously thinking I need to say goodbye to this part of myself for, for my own health, like all the time. And, and, and it was because I was having the best time. I was waking up every morning. I was like working out before work. I'd go to work. We filmed the whole day. I'd go back to the gym or to the tank or whatever. But when the movie, usually when I finish any, any film or any project I work on, I get super sick. Like, because I think I'm like holding everything at bay for like three, four months because it's like, I can't, I can't get sick. I have to be at work every single day. I have to be on and able to give and be generous with my actors. I need to be in a positive state of mind. So that way we can all have a good time because like what we may do is so much fun and incredible. We make movies um, <laughs> that I kind of was like, okay, the movie ends and then all of a sudden I get home and I always get sick. Like I always get a really bad cold or something like that where I just like sleep for like a week. And it was funny leading up to doing, like I started and did Novice and then I did two films simultaneously right afterwards. Oh my God. And 
I knew that that was like, it, that was like an endurance thing for me. I was like, I'm working from basically, you know, September until next year, end of January and 2019 to 2020. And it was funny because when everything shut down in 2020, I was like, oh, wow, this is great. Like I can sit at home right now and I'm going to do some work. And I started writing and working on my own projects. And it really kind of gave me this sort of like, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm really, really happy here right now, sitting at home and like working on things and like really started to kind of ask myself what kind of stories I want to tell and started writing my own projects and, and I'm going to be producing some of them and directing some of them. And, and that kind of gave, that was the self-awareness I think that I had coming off of that was that, you know, this drive doesn't just have to be placed in one area, which was like, it was always like, what was my next project? What is next? And I think, you know, we have this kind of like, um, culture, like every interview you do, they always ask what's next for you. What's next for you. And like, I think I was like, well, it's okay not to have a what's next. It's really okay. Um, sometimes not having a what's next is like the most exciting thing because it means that there's opportunity for something really cool to walk into your life that you might not expect. And so I think that has been, uh, a really good lesson that Alex taught me. And, um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm really grateful for this film in so many ways. Yeah. And uh, that is a, a perfect note to end on. To our viewers, make sure to check out The Novice, which will be released in select theaters uh, on digital platforms and on VOD on December 17th. Isabel, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.